Good morning. Good morning. And good morning. One more time. <laughs> That's a sound check. Good morning. Good morning. So we um, are here this morning at uh, First Baptist Church in Grayton, California. Uh, today is the uh, 30th of April in the year of our Lord, 2023, the last day of April. Looking forward to the rest of the day. Looking back on the good month that it's been, thank the Lord. And um, looking forward uh, to the month of May and the other months as to um, how God will use each one of us to help bring others to have uh, God, Him as their Lord and Savior, so that they can experience that special peace that comes only through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and go to the Heavenly Father, God, in prayer. Oh God, most well, Heavenly Father, you are just, as always, so awesome and, and so wonderful, Father. We love you so much. We thank you for all of your provisions. We thank you for your Son, we thank you for the love that you have for us and that you sacrificed, you propitiated your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who came from heaven to earth in the flesh, Lord, to save each and every one of us, Lord. Lord, we ask that you use us. Use each one of us here today, use each one of us listening online, each one of us that listens to the online presentation as long as it's available out there in the internet. Lord, that each one of us will be used by you in one way or another to have divine appointments with those who don't have that relationship with you. Lord, use us so that we may be used as your instruments, giving glory to only you and not to ourselves, Lord, to help others to come to that personal relationship with you and have that peace, have that understanding that only comes, again, through that relationship with you, Father. Lord, as always, we ask these things in and through your Son's precious name. Amen. Okay. Um, through our personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we do indeed have victory. Victory in Jesus. Number 426 in your hymnal, Victory in Jesus. And for those of you who are online who have sent me messages and I haven't answered you yet, we are using the 1991 Baptist hymnal. 1991 Baptist hymnal. Uh, victory in Jesus, number 426. Beneath the cleansing flood, 
I learn about his feeling of his cleansing power, revealing how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see. And then I cry, Dear Jesus, come and hear my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion He's built for me in glory, and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angel singing, then holding out the story, and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior, forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory. Beneath the cleansing flood. <coughs> Beneath the cleansing flood. You know, as we're singing these words, oh my goodness, scripture just jumps out all over the place in here. Wanted to like put it up, put the music on pause and, and talk about the different things. <laughs> but when you have a chance, look through the words again yourself and see of uh, what scriptures um, jump out at you. It just helps us to realize how thankful we are indeed for God's love and for his son. All right, so our next song is number 644. Count your blessings. 644, count your blessings. Count your 
to blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Many blessings angels will attend, help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Amen. Do you ever do that? Do you ever count your blessings one by one and thank God for them? Today's sermon is out of the uh, Gospel of John. Pastor Michael is going to be on in John 12, verses 44 through 50. And the title of the sermon is Belief. B-E-L-I-E-F. Pastor. Good morning. It's a beautiful day today. It'll be a great day for a ride, too. Okay, so I'm looking at belief here for a moment. Oh, have you ever given any thought when the last time you showed belief in something by telling someone what you believed? What do you believe in? What did you share with them that you believed in? Some politicians will say that we should believe and trust in the government. But think about it. What is missing in that statement or question? How about trust and faith in, in Jesus instead of man? Maybe we should put God first rather than man. When a politician tells you that, that we need to trust the government rather than trusting God, what you may find is revealed to you is that that politician has no relationship with God. <clears throat> and as such, you probably cannot trust him. What does Jesus command of us? <clears throat> we are to tell others about Jesus and salvation. Matthew 28, verse 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So this is not just about sending missionaries. This is what many people believe. It's about sending missionaries somewhere. But it's actually, it's about as you go in your daily walk in life, wait for the Holy Spirit. And he will reveal who you are to talk to in your daily routines. But the priority is on making disciples. The original purpose of any trip we take is secondary to being a representative of Jesus. And in order to be a representative of Jesus and to build his kingdom, each of us has been given spiritual gifts. And they vary. There's a number of them. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 and 12. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So Peter also instructs her to build God's kingdom as well as praising him. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen people a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So as a priesthood, we do what priests do, proclaim the word of God. Now these, the verses we'll be examining occur while Jesus is teaching at the temple. And he taught quite a bit at the temple. 
But what we do see is that we need to share our belief in Christ Jesus with others and that salvation is only for believers. You cannot be saved and enter God's kingdom unless you believe in Christ Jesus. So we'll be talking about belief. So if you open your Bibles to John chapter 12, verse 44, and the first thing we see is by believing in Jesus, we have belief in the Lord. Then Jesus cried out, when a man believes in me, he does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. When he looks at me, he sees the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. So what the scriptures are telling us here is that faith in Christ Jesus gives one the ability to come out of the darkness of the world. We're being shown here the Father and the Son cannot be separated. Now these are just two of the three personalities that are working together as one being, that is God. Jesus is not assuming who he is, he's asserting who he is. John 10.30 I and the Father are one. So he says it more than once through scripture as we see right there. But who do you say Jesus is? Who have you told who Jesus is? Who do you believe who Jesus is? The scriptures instruct that wisdom cries out to us. Proverbs 8.1 Doesn't wisdom call out? Doesn't understanding make her voice heard? The scriptures also tell us wisdom calls us. Have you ever heard God's wisdom calling out to you? How did you respond? Proverbs 120, wisdom calls out in the street. She raises her voice in public squares. So many who believe in Jesus are ashamed of their faith and others are not full of enough courage to profess it. That is, they keep it a secret. Jesus was sincere in his preaching. How sincere are you in believing in him? Now, Jesus was serious in giving his disciples and us the gospel of God. What Jesus taught was similar to what Moses taught. So some of this is not even new. He repeats a lot of what comes out of the uh, first five books of the Old Testament. In Deuteronomy 30, 15, Moses is uh, talking to those on the Exodus. He's talking to those people. See, today I have set before you life and prosperity, death and adversity. So people even then were given a choice, having life or death. The choice both Jesus and Moses laid out to the people was between life and death. There's a similarity there. Each person has to choose themselves which they want. Now you might think that's an easy decision, but by the few people who have accepted Christ, it apparently is not an easy decision to make. Eternal life, for eternal life, one must put their faith and belief in Christ Jesus. There's no other road that takes you to eternal life. Otherwise, by default, you've chosen eternal death. Now, Jesus taught many things. Those who believe in him will have the encouragement to preach and profess his faith. And again, the Holy Spirit's going to guide you in that. The doctrine of Christ is the truth of God. There's a blessing for believing in him. We will no longer live in darkness and condemnation from God. The danger for society, the danger for society is staying in the darkness by having no faith in Jesus. Jesus said he was the light of the world. John 8, 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in darkness will have the light of life. So you see, anyone and everyone could, could be saved, could go to God's kingdom. They've got to follow Jesus. Do you walk in the light or in the darkness? How do you show it to others? Now as we move on, we go to John 12 verses 47 and 48. And Jesus, we see here, came to eternally save those of us who would believe in him. So it's very narrow down and specific. If anyone hears my words and doesn't keep them, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me 
doesn't accept my sayings has this as his judge. The word I have spoken will judge him on the last day. So those who reject Jesus, by default, automatically condemn themselves. Now this is not the first time Jesus said he did not come to judge the world, but to save it. He says that several times through his ministry. And he says the same thing when he's talking to the religious leader Nicodemus. When Nicodemus came at night, which would be a traditional thing to do, not to interrupt teaching during the day, you'd show respect by coming at night. John 3.17 For God did not send a son into the world that he might condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Anyone who believes in him is not condemned. But anyone who does not believe is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. So we find here again Jesus is preaching at the temple. He's declaring there's a danger in not believing in him. It's an eternal danger. Those who do not believe in him will be eternally condemned. There's no middle ground. Either you believe or you don't believe. If you're, if you're going to say, well, I'm in the middle, I'm thinking over it, I'm not sure, I'll decide later, well, you're already condemned because you haven't chosen to believe. There's no middle ground, it's one or the other. It's kind of like a coin, there's top, there's a front, and there's a back. That's it. Jesus had and has great patience in those who reject him. Now, I myself was uh, witness to probably a dozen times before age 50. And it was at age 50 I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So he showed great patience in that letting me on through with uh, continuing to on in this world while people kept trying to save me through his word. But while a person is alive, they still have a chance to change their mind and accept him. It's got to be done while you're alive. Once you die, it's too late. The hourglasses run dry. The sand, the sand timer is now empty. You're, it's done. And this is the one unforgivable sin that is rejecting faith in Jesus. Non-believers, <coughs> excuse me, have judged themselves. We see that in, in Hebrews, chapter two, verses two and three. For if the meshes spoken through angels was legally binding, and every transgression and disobedience received a just punishment. How will we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was first spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. So there's actually the person who wrote Hebrews is saying there's confirmation. It is God's will that everyone be saved. And we see that again in 1 Timothy. Another verse that talks about this, chapter 2, verses 3 through 4. This is good, and it pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So there's many people who believe or have the theology that God predestines before you're born, if you get to go to heaven or you end up in, in hell, you know, there's a, that God's already determined, and nothing you can do can change that. There's many people profess this. The scripture, just for the few verses you read, shows very clearly that everyone has the opportunity to be saved. Everyone. No one is predestined to spend eternity in hell. It's a personal decision of rejecting Jesus. Now, God would like, as I say, everyone to be saved. And Jesus himself said he did not come to, to judge the world. He came to save the world. He didn't say he came to save part of the world or a remnant of the world, or a small portion. He came to save the world. So everybody has the opportunity. God will not have sin in his creation, in his heaven. Salvation is done by accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. God instructed us to listen to Jesus at the transfiguration. You know, that, that incident where James, John, and Peter are on the hill with... Uh, Jesus and Jesus transforms into a spiritual light, spiritual being, and then Elijah and Moses appear. And, and the three of them see this. So if anyone ever asks you, did Moses ever make it to the promised land? You got it right there in that, that uh, in the book of Matthew, that the transfiguration, Joseph, uh, Moses finally did make it. Matthew 17, 5, while he was still speaking, suddenly a bright light covered them, and a voice from the clouds said, 
This is my beloved son. I take delight in him. Listen to him. So God is instructed. We are to listen to Jesus. The mission of Jesus is positive. He came to save the world. He came to evoke belief. He came to rescue humanity from darkness. John 3, 19 through 21. This, then, is the judgment. The light has come into the world. And the people love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who practices wicked things hates the light and avoids it, so that his deeds may not be exposed. That anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light, so that his works will be shown to, the, to, to be accomplished by God. Again, it works like censorship. If it's truthful and honest, why would you hide it from people? So we are judged by the word of God. The things we do in life that are good are not used to judge us. There's nothing, no amount of good I could do. I could become worth $100 million, give it all to charity, helping the poor and setting up hospitals with this $100 million, but it won't get me one millimeter closer to heaven because it has nothing to do what, about what I do. We are judged by what we think. We are not, excuse me, we are not judged by what we think religion is. Religion is man-made. We are judged by the word of God, which is that we need to have a personal relation with God through Christ Jesus. And judgment is not arbitrary. It is inevitable to those who do not put their faith and belief in Jesus. Now, how you display your faith shows if you are eternally saved. Just gives a thought to this. If somebody asks you, what are you doing on Sunday, on a normal Sunday, I mean, there are exceptions, but just a regular everyday Sunday, how do you answer? Do you tell them you're going to church? Do you tell them you're going to a Bible study, or you'll do so during the week sometime? Either one during the week. How do you respond if uh, someone asks you if you are a Christian? Are you embarrassed? Are you shy? And you just come right out and say it. What is your answer, yes or no? Jesus makes it clear what you should be saying if you are eternally saved. Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. Therefore, everyone who will acknowledge me before men, I will also acknowledge before him, before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father in heaven. So your response actually reveals your faith. And finally, we'll be looking at verses 49 and 50, where we are to believe that Jesus only teaches what God instructs him to say. So what we find is Jesus is not teaching his opinion, which we find a lot of pastors will do, they'll teach opinions with a very poor exegesis, but actually he's teaching what God says. And there's a big difference. He doesn't teach opinion, he teaches what God says. John 12, verses 49 and 50. For I have not spoken on my own, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a command as to what I should say and what I should speak. I know that his command is eternal life. So the things that I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. So God speaks through Jesus. Very simple. And what does Jesus do? He speaks the word of God. Now, how often you heard are given an opinion of Scripture rather than what it truthfully means. Have you researched it? Have you taken the time to really study it in the context of other Scripture or within the chapter? The sovereign purpose God had for Jesus was to give mankind eternal life through faith and belief in Him, that is, in Jesus. So it's through your faith and testimony you show your belief in Jesus. Now, Peter preaches in Acts chapter 1, verses 32 through 40. This is uh, during the Pentecost, and there's a lot of people there. And he teaches and preaches about salvation in Jesus. And then in Acts chapter 1, verses 41 through 47, he testifies of the thousands who come to faith and are eternally saved right then. This means they believed what Jesus taught. Now, John chapter 5, verses 21 through 23 
we read, And just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so the Son of God also gives life to anyone he wants to. The Father, in fact, judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, so that all people will honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. Anyone who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who has sent him. So think about this. You cannot honor God and dishonor Jesus. They're one and the same. <clears throat> Jesus has the sole authority to give us eternal life. So we're told to believe in Christ Jesus in order to get into God's kingdom. So by believing in Jesus, we have belief and show we have belief in the Lord. <clears throat> Jesus came to eternally save those who would believe in him. And that we're to believe that Jesus only teaches what God instructs him to say. So there's no opinion in this. No presuppositions. This is what God says, and Jesus repeated it. How do you show others your belief in Jesus? Now, if you've not prayed for the Holy Spirit to come into you and not specifically accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is the time to do it right now. May God bless you. Have a wonderful, blessed week. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Michael. Okay, we're coming towards the uh, end of our worship service here today, but I hope that, I hope for each one of you, as for myself, that worship is a 24-hour day, seven seven day a week thing that we're constantly in worship of our Heavenly Father, God. Regular announcements. Uh, we have uh, Bible study Sunday morning from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. And uh, we're in First Peter in chapter 1. If you'd like to come and join us. Feel free to. We're at 2695 Brush Street in Grayton, California. On Wednesday nights, we have a Bible study. Um, I believe 7 to 8 p.m. And I believe we're somewhere around Genesis 24, somewhere in that area. On the... Uh, Third Sunday of every month, we have potluck, so please give us a shout if you want to come, so make sure that uh, we have food for everybody. Uh, you don't have to bring food, but if you would like to share with us a favorite meal, that would be great. Um, I can't think of any other announcements. Pastor Michael? No? I was going to say, if you happen to have a a weed eater or a lawnmower and you want to come help us uh, take care of our lawn out there, feel free. Anytime, just jump in and do it. You'll, you'll be able to tell what needs to be done and what doesn't need to be done. Also, we are in need of uh, somebody to help us dig a couple of irrigation ditches in preparation for uh, more rain when it comes. We try to keep the rain from going underneath our building and messing with our foundation. And also, uh, there's these little bugs called termites that like to fester there in the wetness of the foundation. So, anybody who wants to help us dig uh, those irrigation ditches, you're welcome uh, to come. Please give us a call. Give us a call. Send us an email. Um, our contact, for those of you who are online, our contact information is uh, on our YouTube page and on our Facebook page. I think if there's anything else, um, prayers, prayer requests, we're always uh, willing to lift your, your prayer requests up to God uh, in unity uh, to join with you in that prayer. Uh, I have a couple of friends that um, are dealing with, uh, one is dealing with uh, cancer uh, lesions that were just discovered in their, 
in their brain, two lesions. Um, so prayers for that person. God knows who they are. Uh, and another person, uh, very healthy, older man, and is somewhere in his 80s. Not to say that 80 is old. <laughs> Just depending on what your thought is on, on age, right? Uh, he loves to ride his bicycle all over the world. And right now he is using a walker because of a, a type of cancer that has uh, basically just is trying to destroy his ability to walk, never mind cycle. Uh, his name is Jerry. If you would like to, if God places it on your heart to link him up in prayer, please do. And also for their, um, he and his wife for their salvation. Prayer always is for the salvation of all of our loved ones, that they will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord, their Lord and Savior. Okay. Um, God knows our heart. So if you have any other prayer requests that you're not speaking out, God knows your heart. Our closing song is number seven. It does say in the bulletin number 187, but I decided to change that uh, to number seven. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. How I wish when we did this song that we would we would have that huge choir to do this song. Ah, I always hear the choir singing, a choir singing huge orchestration when I sing this song, so I hope you can hear it too. I just heard a vehicle um, pull up outside. They're a little bit late, but that's okay. They're here. <laughs> uh, I hope that everybody has a, a wonderful day. Uh, the rest of the day today. Uh, may each one of you be used by God. Take care and have a, again have a blessed day. <laughs>